going to take apart the upper part of this Porter Studio 424 Mark II, cover anything you might need to do, whether it's cleaning, soldering, replacing a broken door. Though I won't be covering exactly how you do those tasks, I will show you how to access the parts. The first thing that we'll do is remove these knobs. That's only necessary if you're going to remove the mixer. If all you're going to do is, say, remove this door or access it, any of these sockets back here, then it wouldn't strictly be necessary. A lot of these are just going to lift out by hand. From time to time you'll get one that's pretty stiff. I'm still able to get those off. Let's say that you couldn't, what can you do about that? Well, if you use pliers, then there's a risk you're going to leave teeth marks on the plastic. You can mitigate that by putting paper towel or fabric around it. What I've been doing recently is using either dental floss or these kind of dental cleaner. The spiky end of one of these you can kind of jam under here until there's enough of a gap that you can get the, the floss part. And then if you lift, that usually dislodges enough that you can then just slip the floss under and lift like that. Before I go ahead and time lapse the rest of this, I'm basically putting all of these in a little plastic dish. You see all those dirty marks? I've got a couple of 44s in at the same time. These ones have been sitting for a while. I sprayed Windex on it. You can see that's already from the dirt that's come off. That's already done quite a lot to dislodge the dirt. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is submerging these in hot but not boiling water. The sort of temperature that a human being would have a bath at. That and a little bit of just normal detergent that you would use to clean dishes with. Drain it with a sieve. You can use compressed there to blow the water out of here, leave them sitting on a towel and then one by one before you actually put them back on, give them a wipe with a paper towel, um, you end up with like really clean knobs usually and that makes it look more like it did when it first came out of the box. I'm now going to put a cushion underneath to make sure that the weight of the mixer or any pressure I put on it doesn't press on these potentiometers and damage anything. First thing I'll do is remove these little printed circuit boards here. You can see that this cable tie keeps that organized. So I unwind that slightly and we have one, two, three, four screws. I'll let you in on something. This is one of the least functional printed circuit boards you will ever see. Absolutely nothing on it. It's just there to keep this cable out of the way. And this one has Three LEDs in it, nothing else. I guess the way this was designed, they went for a look first and then figured out how the printed circuit boards would fit the look, whereas I think the exterior of the 44 Mark III, original 44 and 464, were probably designed around the circuit boards a little bit. And the result of that is that functions that were on one circuit board about yay big and the other units that I've mentioned are distributed across something like eight or nine printed circuit boards here. So it's one of the things that makes this not harder, but more time consuming to disassemble than its immediate predecessors and successors. You would really only remove those for two reasons. One would be to get better access to these buttons. Now, I think there is some kind of adhesive that keeps this attached to these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plastic pins. They do come out. You might want to remove that if one of these buttons snapped off the pair of little hinges. You could do that by gluing cable ties along the back of there. I've shown that type of repair in one of my 244 videos, so look for that on my channel. The other thing is just that you had a dead LED, and so you would want to solder that. Before we tackle all this, we'll remove the door. You can see that the spring is on the left hand side. Basically if I move that out of the way so it's no longer wrapped around this arm of the door hinge or I don't know what my terminology is here really. Um, now it won't stay open. The click shot is this little spring thing here. It won't stay open whereas if I wrap that back around there and it springs open and stays open. That's what that spring is doing. Remove that again.
All the screws that I'm removing, unless I state otherwise, are of this wide ferrule type, which is typically used into plastic or into wood applications. The two common screw types you get taking apart Tascams is this and also a slightly narrower one with a much narrower ferrule, which is screwed into metal. These plates will now lift off. They are in fact identical. There's a little bit of grease on the shaft there. If you wanted to clean that off and then replace it with silicon grease, you could do that. Part of the spring that doesn't have this square end is basically pushing against the plastic there. And then you lift that part up there to wrap around. With those removed, the door just comes out from the front. Moving on to the mixer. With these things, I find it's helpful to leave notes to myself uh, using a permanent marker. I'm going to leave arrows pointing to all of the screw locations. In the case of this one up here at the top, that's connecting this earth point to the lower part of the machine so that they've got a common ground. So I'll put ground there to remind myself. Here and here we have cable ties, so I'll write C slash T. I mean, use your own shorthand. If you're repairing several machines at once, you might want to remind yourself what this is. So I'll say 424 four, mark to shield behind mixer so that if the parts of this machine become separated and you come to this bit of foil and you're like uh which the various disassembled electronic devices that i have lying around does this belong to at least you know goes without saying don't lose anything but in particular don't lose this ground cable that came from there if this whole board and array of sockets isn't connected to ground then you're gonna have buzz and so on so it'll be particularly careful with this little wire uh, at that point that piece of foil will just lift out one thing i will say about this model is one of the most solidly constructed ones when i was first confronted with this and i saw these metal pins i didn't know what that was about there's a whole metal chassis on the other side of there there's no point in fiddling with those now we need to detach the whole thing from the plastic case if we count you can see there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen did i count that one fifteen screws holding that in place in fact i think there may be more underneath here the precise number isn't important i'm just telling you that most of the units i worked on don't have that many screws. Note that these two screws are different. I believe they're the only ones of that kind. They're a little black countersunk screw. So maybe circle it, I'll put BLK, short for black. We've also got this one here that's connecting an earth wire from this board to this metal plate. So I maybe want to put an E to remind myself that that's where the earth goes. We can also see that although some of these screws have got a little screw symbol, I don't know if that's clear in this light, but there is a little graphic of a screw beside them. This one here doesn't have that graphic beside it, but it does have a screw in it. We don't want to get that mixed up with these one, two, three, four holes that were for the shielding. I'm marking that one to say, even though there isn't a screw graphic, I want to put a screw back there. And I'm going to circle these and put an SH. That will remind me that it's for the shield. This now comes away. At that point, we're done with the plastic case. If you're definitely going to remove the mixer for repair or cleaning anyway, then that's probably the easiest state in which to clean the plastic. My process with that would be to, on top of newspaper, spray it with uh, Windex. Once it's been sitting for a while, then again, if you had a large enough plastic basin, you could actually get the kind of scrubbing brush that you'd use for dishes and a little bit of detergent. Leave it to dry, you know, on a low heat, a hairdryer can help blow some of the air out the crevices and so on. Let's talk about how all of this is connected. So we have ribbon cables running from the sockets to the mixer. If you can possibly keep those ribbon cables attached, I would encourage you to do that. These things aren't the easiest things to detach and attach, in my opinion. Just in case somebody watching this feels like they would prefer to detach these daughter boards from this mixer board, I will demonstrate how to do it. Basically, each one of these has got a little plastic cover like that. I will get a flathead screwdriver. 
And when you came to reassemble this, then you'd need to match the number of pins. There's a little sort of spring-loaded mechanism in there, um, and you can see that the, the wires coming out of this ribbon cable are... You kind of need to get all of these exactly the right width apart so that they slot into their holes, and they're all going into their holes simultaneously. And then when you push a certain point, it'll bite because the spring-loaded mechanism will go past one of the bumps in the cable. Then you put the white cover back on. There's some repairs you probably could solder in there, but there's other ones where it'd probably be convenient to have this board separate from this mounting plate. So there's nothing very technical about this. It's just some clips that need to be pulled away from these quarter-inch jack sockets. And then there's three screws here to do with these RCA sockets and two screws per XLR socket. Sometimes with these videos, I you know I show sped up footage of me unscrewing a screw. Um, it's visually obvious where these screws are, so I don't see any advantage to that. Probably in editing, just cut to, to a point where I've removed those. I'll just, for your benefit though, take a couple of these off. You basically grab them with pliers. And you pull off like that. Okay, and so with all those screws and clips removed, that'll come away. Um, the two boards are connected by these two ribbon cables. There's no way to detach those ribbon cables without desoldering. You'd be able to do any soldering or replacing of components just fine like that. Say you had one faulty XLR socket but not a faulty jack socket, you could leave the jack sockets attached to that metal plate and then have this board dangling off and only solder that. At this stage you could just pull off these um, switch caps so they can be cleaned, you know, they get a certain amount of dirt around you know, the edges of them. Those are all identical. To get at these pots for cleaning and to remove them if you're actually going to do that level of soldering and repair, then this metal plate, which is pretty heavy, needs to be removed. There's these, what would you call, hinged teeth or something that are kind of holding them in place. There is one in the middle here, but actually you just might need to prod that when you remove the metal plate. It doesn't seem to hold it in, whereas these ones are attaching to ground. Just slide them out of the way. Well, then it might need a little bit of encouragement, but keep working around all the pins until it comes away. So there aren't many parts like that in Pascal's, but again, you could just say two, four, mark two, what we call this mixer chassis. It may be labelled as something else in the service manual, but I don't have the service manual for this, so who knows. At that point, we've kind of got access to all these pots and switches so we can clean them easily. And if, you know, something needed to be removed all together, then we could disorder that side. The process for cleaning this as much as I have already demonstrated in other models. I would get some contact cleaner, wiggle these things around so the contact cleaner is rubbing it up against the mechanical parts inside, which are basically going to be little brushes up against carbon or some sort of ferric plate. Once it's had time to do its work, then I'm going to get compressed air. In my case, I've uh, adapted this pump for a water bed. <laughs> use that to blow the air out. You can just let it evaporate in its own time. You can get in there with kind of q-tips or whatever. With the faders you can go an extra step, take some of the excess cotton off a q-tip and sort of jam it into that space. And then I would use some kind of appropriate switch or mixer lubricant. I've been getting away with using Deoxit Fader F 100L lubricant for conductive plastic faders and controls. That has for me worked for switches and pots and faders.